So, destructuring. This is a strange sounding word, but um, the idea is quite simple. Often you get um, a collection as an input of your function. Okay, you get a single thing, which is a collection. And you want to access those elements. And, well, you can do that in the in the code itself, extracting, finding the first and the second, but this can be, again, automated um, as well. And this is the story of the structuring. So, let's just have a simple example. Okay, this is just calculating the slope of a line. Okay, so that's how steep that is, and if you have these two coordinates for the points, okay, in order to, to find the slope, you do um, this computation. Okay, it's very simple. So this is what we want to do um, in code. So imagine that someone gives you um, the following specification. So, okay, let's see. This is how we want to have. So this is the specification. Interesting that it doesn't take it into score code, but okay. So we, we need to write this function slope. And what what it gets? Well, let me just copy it here anyway. It's easier to read. Well, slope hasn't been defined. Well, already we know that. Um, so basically, what you get as an input is a vector that contains two pairs, also represented as as vectors. Okay, so. It, it certainly your input has a structure. This is how we store um, two points. Yeah. So I have to write um, this one. So if I write slope, okay, what do I get? Well, let's call it a line. Okay, that data structure is called a line. And what do I do? Well, I divide. Divide what? So now, let's look at that. So I need to have the two y coordinates. Uh, okay. Subtracted. So that will be um, okay. The second. Uh, uh, maybe that's the other way around. Never mind. So I, what I want to have, I want to have y two. Okay, well let's uh, let's write a specification here as well. So this is how it looks like. It's x1, y1, xt, y2. Okay. So based on that, now I can see that I want to to get the second, which is y2, of the second of line okay that's that's y2 minus what well it's gonna be the second because it's a y coordinate and the second of line okay so I, I divide this with what I mean let's look at that well, x2 minus x1 okay so that's gonna be the, the first. Uh, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's the first of the second of the line minus the first of the first of the line. Okay, so I have a slope function now, and. Um, Well, miraculously, that's not a um, nice example because um, 4 minus 2, well, so why do I get 0? Well, let's see. So 
this is the textbook example uh, let me check that okay so I paused for a moment and I found that yeah there is a bit of a problem here because that's not the second that's the first okay so that's live coding for you that's two and now that makes sense because four minus two is two divided by um, two minus one which is one and that's two okay so we have a slope function are we happy and it's like whoa it's just what is this called second first first second it's like um do we enjoy this not really because if you if we look at it two days later and it's like oh what what is this function doing we will not understand it so this is not it's working but not nice not very not readable we can improve this so if you think about it, what's the problem here the problem is that the actual computation okay, the, the business logic so to speak is very much intermingled with uh, extracting the data from the input okay so I'm doing two things at the same time and therefore it's very difficult to see this often happens it's uh, in software engineering the source of the problem is when we do two things at the same time and it's very difficult to understand and the cognitive load is very high on the coder or on the the, the reader so let's do it um, slightly better so I have slope 2 and it takes a line so that's fixed that came from the specification but now I will have a um, a let statement okay and it's like I'm, I'm clever now because it's like while well, I'm saying that let's call it P1 the, uh, the first of the line okay so that's the point because as you see it's like I'm referring to the second of the line second of the line twice here uh, same with the first okay and now I can talk about x1 which is the first of p1 and I can talk about y1 which is the second of p1 and x2 that will be the first of p2 the x coordinate and y2 it's going to be the second of P2. Okay, so now I have X1, Y1, and X2, Y2. And now it says I can actually write this computation very nicely. Okay, if everything is fine, let's double check. Okay, so it does the same computation. Um, so let's check how, how happy uh, we are at this moment. So now what happened is that while well, we separated this part as just mm, destructured, so it's just extracting information from this composite data structure, which is a line, it's a nested um, vector, and just giving it names. So this is like very nice, um, makes it um, quite readable that oh, what we call point one, point two, and the x and the y coordinates fine, and more importantly, it is. Uh, the actual computation is clear. Well, it's like you know, compare th this with the, the mathematical um, part here. Okay, that's an image, so I cannot highlight. Never mind. So that's uh, there is a clear correspondence between uh, this mathematical specification and the code. So that's that's winning. Why are we not happy? Because we had to do this manually. 
okay that's a problem we don't like this it's like I have to write this let statement and this is sort of you know whenever I'm, I'm not happy doing something because I feel that oh this is not something that requires any cleverness this is just a, a chore I have to write it down it can be automated and that's exactly what destructuring does for you so um, let's define the the final one and let's call it slope 3 it's exactly the same I take a line okay that's a data structure representing a line and now um, well yeah that's exactly the point instead of line let's see now I will say that um, I'm getting a vector okay so this is the first argument I just <laughs> don't move it around ah, okay yeah I cannot convince my system to write it differently okay but this is the first um, there is only one argument so this is the first argument of the function and it's uh, I'm actually telling how it looks like okay so what, what I did here basically I described the, the shape of, of the data by labeling the pieces okay and this is nothing else it's just oh I can actually copy paste this part because I I did um, it already Okay, so this is the, the final thing. This is the destructuring. So what happens here is that um, closure will translate this into a let statement, very similar to this one. Okay, but I, I don't have to write how to do this because it's sort of obvious how to do it. So I just give the shape of the input, and it's um, I can nicely work those directly okay so compare the or maybe they fit in the same screen yeah slope slope 2 slope 3 this is this is the worst avoid this at all costs this is nice um, this is already good enough but um, you want to live in this world okay when um, you can just do the structuring and it's um, okay initially it is probably very difficult to get the number of uh, square brackets right if you destructure a vector or, or a sequence uh, but once you get the hang of it nothing beats this okay um, so this works uh, this is sequ sequential destructuring and um, in general if you want to know what's going on So, um, sort of a debugging. There is this um, thing available that you can ask for this structure. Ah, this structure hasn't been defined. Mm. Okay, well, that's. Um, something to check later why why we don't have it here but that's um sort of the uh, the structure probably because it's a it's a macro and in the closure script you have some problem with that mm, okay um that's something to check later um, what we can do with that but that would just actually give you the last statement of what is generated by the computer Okay, there is another one, and that's um, sort of the um, 
associative destructuring when you have a hash map. Okay, that's again the same idea. It's like, okay, let's define it this way. This is a very simple hash map. And of course, this structuring does work not just in in code. I mean, in function call, but in let statement as well. Okay, so I can say that. Well, I want to destructure m. So m is my my little uh, hash map there, and I want to say that I want to bind a to the t a. And um, I can even use a comma there just to be more clear. So B to that. Okay, and that's three and five. So again, in, I'm sort of um, giving the um, the shape of the the data, but it's um, for the hash maps. It's a bit uh, more awkward. It's sort of the other way around a little bit. Um, but this is this is useful as well. Okay, so that's the structuring, and it's um, basically the idea is that when you have um, a data structure a collection um, as the function input, um, you can um, actually just give the shape, sort of a visual shape of how how it looks like, and that that pattern, so if it matches the uh, the input collection, the input data structure. Then you get the simple bindings, the lead bindings uh, for free. Okay, so this is this is very nice. Uh, the uh, the earlier you get used to destructuring, the better.